maybe it's time to start thinking about AI, now often referred to as cognitive technologies, in new ways. Recently, two very useful new terms have been coined to help differentiate efforts to build AIs. Artificial Narrow Intelligence, ANI, and Artificial General Intelligence, AGI. Artificial General Intelligence, sometimes referred to as strong AI, is a research field attempting to build machines that are generally cognitive. These machines are not being built for any specific purpose, but to replicate the full range of human-like cognitive function. Some people argue that one of the aims of AGI is to produce a conscious machine. Much of this research currently focuses on building systems that replicate neurological processes, and great strides have been made in recent years. AGI also raises the question, is building an artificial general intelligence simply a matter of building a machine that models every connection in the brain? If we achieved that, would we have a machine that behaves like a person? However, there's a significant gap in our understanding that we must bridge before this question can be answered. On the other hand, artificial narrow intelligence, sometimes called applied AI, is a term used to describe a system that performs some single function as competently, or perhaps even better than, a human. ANIs may be narrow, but they're already changing the world. And the impact to business has been huge. More than half of the equity shares traded in most markets are traded by algorithmic high-frequency traders, not people. Autonomous vehicles are now a reality, and satellite navigation systems have long since been able to plot an efficient route across the city. If we look back over the last century, we start to see the significant automation of physical work as machines started to take on heavy lifting and repetitive tasks. This automation started in agriculture, but quickly spread to manufacturing and other sectors. In the same way machines have changed the way that we approach physical work, a new generation of AI-powered technologies is increasingly to be found in the workplace, supporting or even replacing the knowledge worker to form knowledge work automation. McKinsey predict that over the next decade, the impact to the global economy of automating knowledge work will be between five and seven trillion dollars per annum. We are just at the beginning of this monumental shift. What's more, society is starting to accept these narrow applications of AI. It's already becoming normal to devolve more and more of our thinking to machines. Few people like repetitive rote tasks, and adopting technology frees us up to perform more meaningful work. The rise of mobile apps that have marked the last decade are set to be replaced with consultative bots that can give us robo-advice through any of our favorite messaging platforms. Many of the problems suffered by AI in the 1970s can be solved by building narrow applications of AI. We can overcome the shortfalls of the logical approach to knowledge engineering by adopting probabilistic programming techniques. Many of those early techniques failed because datasets were too tiny or because computing power was some millions of times too slow by comparison with today's standards. But it's no longer necessary to employ a large team of software developers to build a system that will radically change the way you approach your business. Tools like Rainbird are transforming contact centers, improving operational efficiency, increasing sales and managing governance and risk. Everything has changed. <laughs>